Hi, I'd like to share with you a bit of mathematics that I find particularly astounding, and it has to do with the roots of 1. What are the square roots of 1? Well, obviously, 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. You can say this question as what squared equals 1. And 1 squared equals 1. 1 times 1 equals 1. But there's another number that, when you square it, equals 1. And that's negative 1. Negative 1 squared, well, that's just negative 1 times negative 1. And you can see that the negatives here cancel out, and you just get 1 times 1, which equals 1. So there are two solutions to the square root of 1. 1 and negative 1. Well, that's interesting, but uh, it's nothing that we didn't really know before if we've taken an algebra or pre-calculus class. So let's move on to something a little bit more interesting. I'm going to go to another color here. What are the fourth roots of 1? OK, so like before, that question is really asking, what to the fourth power equals 1? OK. Well, we can do this too. I mean, 1 is still an answer here because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, well, that's just 1. And negative 1 is an answer because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, negative 1 to the fourth, right? Well, let's break that down. That's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Well, these two negatives cancel out, and that just leaves 1. And these two negatives also cancel out. That just leaves 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. So negative 1 is still an answer to the fourth root of 1. Uh, but amazingly, there is another answer here. And that is i. i to the fourth equals 1. And let's see why that is. i times i times i times i. Well, how do we do i times i? It's actually really simple. We know that the square root of negative 1 equals i. And if you square both sides of this, then the radical and the square cancel out. And you just get negative 1 equals i squared, right? So this can be rewritten as i squared times i squared. And so that is negative 1 times negative 1. And these negatives cancel out, and it just equals 1. So i to the fourth equals 1. That means a fourth root of 1 equals i. Well, that's interesting. OK, but it goes even farther, because negative i to the fourth well, that also equals 1. Let's see why. Negative i times negative i times negative i. And my computer's not that fast, so it's lagging a little. Sorry about that. Negative i times negative i times negative i times negative i. That, well, these two negatives cancel out, and you just get i times i. And these two negatives cancel out as well, and you get i times i. And that's i times i times i times i, which we already established is equal to 1. So negative i is a solution to the fourth root of 1. Well, that's pretty interesting, actually, because the square root of 1 has two solutions, and the fourth root of 1 has four solutions. Now, at this point, I'm going to do something clever that people do with, with imaginary numbers quite a bit. I'm going to plot them on a Cartesian plane, which is just uh, which is just an xy plane like this. I'm going to put the real numbers here on the x-axis. So I'm going to make one here and negative one here. And I'm going to put the imaginary numbers on the y-axis. So this will be i and this will be negative i. Okay, when we found the square roots of 1, 
we found that they were 1 and negative 1. So I'm going to graph those in red. Square root of 1, it's red. 1 and negative 1. There's two of them in the may. They kind of form a line here along the x-axis. Then I'm going to go to yellow, and we're going to graph the fourth roots of 1. Okay. Well, here's one here, 1. And here's another one here, negative 1. And then i, as we saw before, and negative i. So we have the fourth roots of 1 are 1, negative 1, i, and negative i. Well, that's kind of interesting. They form, if you see here, they form kind of a diamond shape or a square turned on its side, if you will, that I'm outlining for you. So, let's look at, and I'm going to choose another color, I'm going to choose pink, because why not? The cube roots of one. How many are there? And what are they? I'm going to just guess, because square root of 1 formed a line, and fourth root of 1 formed a kind of diamond shape. I'm going to guess that cube root of 1 will form a triangle, because it will have three answers. This is a pattern. You can see this follows a pattern. Square root of 1 had two answers. Fourth root of 1 had four answers. And so I'm going to guess that cube root of 1 has three answers, so it forms a triangle. You'll also notice that this distance right here, that's a horrible curly bracket, but that is, oops, I wrote two when the answer is one. And this distance right here, also one. This distance here is one. So the distance of all these points to the origin is one, that's kind of interesting. Same thing with the red points, their distance is one. So when I guess what the cube root of three will be, I'm going to guess that it will have a distance to the origin of one. So I'm just gonna draw in a triangle right here. I'm gonna draw in some points of a triangle. I'm just gonna cover up the red. A pink triangle that represents the three solutions to cube roots of one. And this distance will be one. And this distance here will be one. In keeping with the pattern, I can do that straighter. In keeping with the pattern of our, this is also one, of our fourth roots and square roots of one. These distances will all be one. So, I can actually do a neat trick. I can make a unit circle that passes right through all these points. I'm not saying I'm going to draw it well, but the definition of a, of a unit circle is that all points on the unit circle are one unit from the origin. And our points that we're solving are also one unit from the origin. This point is one unit from the origin. I is one unit from the origin. One is one unit from the origin. So I can use the unit circle to find this, what the value of this point is. And in fact, I have a unit circle right here that we can, that we can use. So let me get my pink, and I'm going to show you what three points we are doing. Here's one point of the triangle, here's the second point, and here's a third point. In fact, I'll even draw a triangle for you, why not? Because that's easy for me to do. Come on, triangle. There we go. So this is the triangle that we're making. And these are the two points that we are guessing, if you cube them, then the value will be 1. So, what are the values here? If you can use sine and cosine, obviously, to get this. It's 2 pi over 3, or tau over 3, if that's how you prefer. And this is our x-coordinate, which is our real number. And this is our y-coordinate, which is our imaginary number. So, square root of 3 over 2 i plus negative one-half. So let's come back over here and see if we can work this out. So the coordinate of this, of this point right here is going to be negative one-half. That's our real component. That's cosine 2 pi over 3 plus uh, square root of 3 
over 2, that is sine 2 pi over 3, or tau over 3, i, because that's our imaginary component, the sine gets you the y component, which is our imaginary component. So this number, cubed, should equal, if our guess is correct, should equal 1. But what? This junk cubed equals 1? That's really complicated. There's no way something this complicated can equal 1. Well, we're going to work it out if you'll bear with me. I'm going to, I'm going to cube this number and you're going to see it looks complicated, but it's really actually not that hard. We're going to cube it and we're going to get 1. 